We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, there, done done that. that. If you've chosen to follow a curriculum, sometimes the monotony of it can feel stifling, leaving you and your children disinterested and longing for a more engaging approach to learning. Oftentimes people will start curriculum hopping, but exploring a unit study might be the refreshing change you're looking for. Its integrative approach can breathe life into your homeschool as it weaves together various subjects around a central theme. Unit studies can be an opportunity to infuse excitement back into your day. I love the hands-on engagement that comes with unit studies and how it can really get your kids excited about the theme. Some people choose to do unit studies as the central core in their homeschool instead of traditional curriculum. There are tons of options. In today's episode, we're going to talk about unit studies and how to create one for your homeschool. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space. Space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, we want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Maria. Another 6 a.m. for us. I know. It's really early. I've got my coffee. (laughs) I'm in my pajamas. You are. I am not because I just got back from Camp Gladiator, my trainer. Oh my gosh. We burpeed to death, walking lunges, all the things. Oh my gosh. 5 a.m. on the concrete. Good for you. (laughs) I'm up for my first thing to do today, which is this. And I am barely, I'm, I don't have my contacts in. I'm not dressed. (laughs) I've got my coffee. I sent you a TikTok of some lady who's like, hey, hot girls, how do you get ready to run errands? And this lady just puts on a robe and then has all of her cups, which, you know, I always come over here with a smoothie and a water and a coffee. (laughs) That was you. (laughs) It was totally me. (laughs) I watched that. I laughed my butt off. And then, of course, I got sucked in when I was trying to pull myself out of bed for Camp Radiator. But she's so funny. I follow her now. Oh. You should check her out. Her <laughs> I will. Stuff. It she's just tickled me. <laughs> super funny. So what have you been up to? Oh, my goodness. Just crazy weekend. District for youth and government. Had a fashion in Arkansas. I've been all over the place. And How did the mentorship go with the youth and government? Oh, my gosh. They rocked it out. It was awesome. Oh. I was so nervous going into the event. Uh, but two of our kids got distinguished delegate. And uh, we just had a really good time. And I got thrown in as an evaluator, which I've never done before. They were like, come to the evaluator training. And then literally handed me like a form and just fill this out. <laughs> I was like, that's the training? Uh-huh. <laughs> It was a little crazy, it but I kind like of, went well. yeah, I learned while I went and it was neat. And so well, and- that's, I've been stuck here with all my home improvement projects. You know, my, I had a crack in my drywall, which led to me getting a guy to repair that. He mm-hmm. is an expert drywaller, nice. which led to redoing my kitchen, which led to replacing some doors, which led to replacing some siding outside, which led to me replacing my dryer, which oh my the new one didn't fit. So now I'm having to reconfigure the space. If and- you give a mouse a cookie... <laughs> My house is still not completely put back together, yeah. and I don't have a washer and dryer till I get this resolved. Oh but my goodness. by this weekend, I should be ready for the holidays. Oh my gosh. Are you going to have it done, or you have to go to the laundromat? No, 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 no. I have so many clothes there. No. You're we, fine. We're just making do. You know, we have a friend who the laundry is always her last thing to kind of go, and so... Every now and then she'll just put everything in the car and go to the laundromat and do 10 loads of laundry at the same time. No, I haven't been to a laundromat (laughs) since college and I'm okay with that. Uh, Yeah, I think there's a bar in Austin or there used to be years ago and it was a bar slash laundromat and you could come and do your laundry. Yeah. Hang out, watch the game and yeah, drink a like beer. Yeah, like a suds and duds. <laughs> and the suds that. are beer, not soap. Okay, I could probably get on board with a laundromat like that. <laughs> I know, that might be fun. Every now and then I'll take my comforter from my bed to a laundromat because it's easier to put it in like a big washer or dryer instead of mine. Mine won't like dry it all the way and then I have to hang it. And so oh, I would rather hang it. I just, unless it's a suds and duds, I'm out. You're out. <laughs> 
<laughs> and all this home improvement has got me involving my kids. Cameron was helping me with some of the projects, which kind of leads into this because I didn't make it into a unit study, uh, but I could have. You could have. Because you can make anything into a unit study. You sure can. Home improvement, anything. Yeah. And we have always really enjoyed unit studies. I'm so excited to talk about them today. I especially enjoyed them when my kids were younger and they were really hyper-focused on a certain topic and we would dive in deep and learn everything we could about our chosen theme. We did unit studies on, we did penguins and the light spectrum and music and so many other things that we did unit studies on. Yeah, I've always enjoyed taking a break from our curriculum and then jumping into a unit study. It always seems to reignite my kids and brings kind of a new and refreshing joy of learning into our home. Uh, one of my favorite ways to incorporate unit studies is during the holidays holiday season you know oh, we yeah, yeah uh, we've always found that embracing a unit study during the holidays can offer a sense of flexibility and allows for exploration while still delving into meaningful learning experiences yeah for sure everybody's always so busy during the holidays and it's a great time to abandon the typical curriculum and it also helps to avoid burnout i know susan weisbauer said one time uh, like everyone wants to quit in november and february like about homeschooling <laughs> and seasoned homeschoolers know that this is true i'm starting to see those like posts pop up on forums right now it like it is you're so excited when the semester starts and you and know let's I... get into this and it's like oh a couple months later yeah it's <laughs> that downward lot. spiral of the holidays and yeah no, this is it's normal. It's normal to feel that this time of year. Well, and homeschoolers often gravitate towards unit studies due to their holistic and integrative approach to education. They can offer a unique way to combine multiple subjects around a central theme, and it allows for a more immersive and interconnected learning experience. Yeah, this method of learning aligns with the personalized nature of homeschooling. It enables parents to tailor that education to their child's pace and interest and learning style, and it really can foster a deeper understanding of a subject by exploring it from multiple angles. It also encourages critical thinking and provides hands-on learning opportunities. You can generally make unit studies multi-age, which promote family involvement. This is one of my favorite things about unit studies, that everybody's learning the same thing, maybe just a different level or depth. And this approach tends to nurture a rich and engaging learning environment that goes beyond traditional textbooks and classroom settings. So what exactly is a unit study. Let's start by defining it. <laughs> right. That would be helpful since we've just jumped right into talking about them. Well, a homeschool unit study is an interdisciplinary approach to learning that revolves around a specific theme or a topic. Um, it encourages students to explore and understand a subject deeply by incorporating multiple subjects and various activities into a comprehensive study plan. So let's break down the key features of a homeschool unit study. Well, typically they are theme centered, so they focus on that topic and it could be as simple as an animal like penguins or broader topics like birds. It could be a historical event or historical period. It could be a scientific concept or a specific piece of literature, especially if your children love a certain book, you can make a whole unit study around yeah. that or even a specific country, or an entire geographic location. There really are endless options for this, and we're going to list a bunch of ideas later in this episode, but kind of gives you an idea about what it is. There's also going to be an emphasis on student interests. Homeschool unit studies can be tailored to a student's interests, which help foster a love of learning. <laughs> you know, I love to say foster a love of learning. <laughs> It's like the Easter egg that I hide in every it's episode. It's true, but unit studies really do do that. They are. And like, like, say you have a kid who's obsessed with dinosaurs or cars or a time period, you know, try a unit study. That's a great way to get them involved. Right. And you can also integrate all the subjects like math, science, history, language, arts, and art around that chosen theme. And this will create a holistic understanding of the topic. And this is also a huge time saver if you have multi-age kids or you're trying to fit a lot of subjects into your day. You can meet with all your kids for a read aloud. And then once you kind of do uh, some group activities, then you can 
can break off for age appropriate activities or assignments. Yeah, meet them at their level. Unit studies are also great for multi sensory learning. They incorporate various learning methods. Uh, you might do some reading, writing, experiments, field trips, art projects, discussions. You can really cater to different learning styles within your family. Unit studies often emphasize real life applications and hands on activities to make learning more engaging and practical. You can do all kinds of things with these. Yeah, homeschoolers can customize a unit study and they encourage students to explore a subject all the way through, totally in depth. And as Nicole mentioned earlier, it promotes critical thinking and a deeper understanding of the topic. Many find that choosing a main book or resource as a spine is helpful as kind of a reference back throughout the entire unit. And like she said, you can incorporate all kinds of field trips. We always like to finish with a field trip or a big project. You can incorporate documentaries and movies and even games or apps all around your central theme. Yeah, unit studies are a popular approach in homeschooling because they provide a flexible and immersive way to learn, really allows your students to delve deeply into topics of personal interest while covering core academic subjects. So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, please come and comment on our Facebook page on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd really love to hear from you. So what are some ideas for great unit studies? Well, the topics for unit studies are really endless. You can make one about anything you want. And so we're going to talk about a few examples of unit studies that can be adapted and expanded upon to kind of give you an idea. One really popular one that I've actually done twice. (laughs) I've actually done this twice as well. You have? (laughs) Yeah. Is ancient Egypt. You can cover history by exploring pharaohs, pyramids, and daily life. You can integrate art by creating hieroglyphics or Egyptian art pieces. We made paper back then, papyrus. You Mm -hmm. can study geography by examining the Nile River. I think you and I both did the exact same Nile River project. The turkey in the turkey pan. In the turkey pan. Yep, with the grass seed and the flooding. And the silt comes up. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. (laughs) You can delve into mythology and religion. And you can even incorporate science by studying the mummification process. I know three homeschoolers that mummified a chicken um yep me you we, did okay yes. four. <laughs> oh d- really i'm yeah. not included in that one already yeah we yeah, mummified a chicken yeah my we... friend did it with a fish i was like okay no amy did that she said never again yeah <laughs> we opted to make a sugar cube pyramid instead we did one of those we as did well. a bunch of lego pyramids too we we've made so many things with yeah. ancient egypt that we is were way into ancient favorites. egypt <laughs> for a while i think a lot of homeschoolers end up going down an ancient Egypt path at some point. Right. Yeah. I think we talked about having ancient, I, Jack had an ancient Egypt birthday party. Didn't you have one too? We did a Mount Vesuvius covers oh. the ancient city of Pompeii in AD 79. That's right. For my four-year-old. <laughs> Another popular unit study that probably a lot of homeschoolers do is about the weather. You can explore meteorology, covering science through understanding weather patterns, math through data analysis, geography by studying climates around the world, and language arts through weather-related literature, writing weather reports. We used a Williamson Kids book um, that I'll link in the show notes as our base for this. We actually ended up building like an entire weather station. We got really into this. Yeah, we built an anemometer. That was something that hung around the house for years and years, and a rain gauge. And we started this really young they would go outside and look at the clouds and identify the clouds weather is a really easy one to start when they're little because it's usually part of your like morning routine anyway like you know what's the weather going to be today what kind of clothes do we need to wear exactly so okay well moving on to another popular one are animals and habitats you can dive into biology by studying specific animals and their habitats and you can see how you can change this and create this as a multi-age thing 
interesting because you can study animals and their habitats on all kinds of levels. You can incorporate geography by mapping out where these animals live. You can explore environmental science by discussing conservation efforts. And you can also integrate art by creating representations of various habitats. I remember during one of our unit studies, my kids made a desert diorama. My daughter, of course, she wired a light at the top, which represented the sun and did circuitry. Yeah, I'm just remembering now that Sarah did a paper mache class at our co-op and they made a bunch of animals. I remember she made this incredible turtle. Do you remember that? It was really... I don't remember that. Yeah. So yeah, if you're like, what kind of art can I do with animals? Try some paper mache. Another popular topic is inventors or inventions. Connect history by studying key inventors and their impact, science, through understanding the principles behind inventions. You can add in some math there by calculating measurements or timelines and language arts through biographical writing or reading invention-related literature. There's like all kinds of stuff you can do with that. I mean, there's already stuff out there, uh, history of science kind of inventor guides, but we We went on a deep rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. We also went on a deep rabbit hole with this. Caraticus Potts, Dick Van Dyke, inspired my kids from a very early age. And they both wanted to be inventors, especially Riley. Chitty, chitty, bing, bang. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. That moment when Caraticus opens the doors and the car is ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, It's a huge hit. I love, like, we had ended up. I don't even remember what book like got us into this whole invention timeline. But then we ended up down at the Dallas Arboretum in the Children's Garden. And they have that big water area that you can play in. And my kids were like, that's an Archimedes screw. Yeah. And I was like, it is. So... Oh, one of my first co-ops, we actually did a unit study on inventors. I forgot. The kids were young. I think like pre-K and third or Yeah. Homeschoolers don't do grades at that age. But right. <laughs> I'm learning how to relate to people who do. And we made an Archimedes screw. And I didn't even know what that was. Yeah. I learned about it in our pre-K oh, class. Well, now you can co-op. go to the Dallas Arboretum Children's Garden and play with one in person if you need to. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know what? That kind of brings up. I really do love the fact that I went to public school. And I got out of there not learning a lot. And so this was kind of my second chance. And we don't talk about that much in in our podcast, but I've learned more in homeschool than I have ever learned in public education. Oh, yeah. You're uh, you're learning alongside your child, like, every day. You really are. Oh, another popular one is space exploration. You can cover science. You can study planets and space travel. You can talk about history through the space race and talk about key astronauts. You can do math by calculating distances or sizes of celestial bodies. I have my celestial hike freebie on Mm -hmm. the website you can download that you can do that with kids as young as three or four we loved it it's one of our favorite activities at that age you can do language arts through writing about space exploration or reading related literature oh yeah tons of it yeah you can watch a space documentary or movie like hidden figures you can design build and launch rockets we did that you can incorporate art and creating space themed projects yeah yeah we just did we just did a space exploration unit like a couple years ago if you can visit like a local planetarium or an observatory or someone with a telescope somebody in our co-op found this guy that happens to own this giant telescope and he had us out to his farm at night and showed us if it was awesome. Yeah, there's a amateur astronomy club here. They meet up in Frisco once a month and these amateurs bring out these enormous telescopes. Yeah. Of one of the parks up there and they just, you know, welcome the public, anybody who wants to come out. It's really cool. That's- yeah, this um guy whose farm we went out to, he actually like built this shed that has like a rolling roof that opens oh wow so like like it's a big it's a permanently mounted telescope it's huge but yeah so that ended up becoming part of the lesson too because the kids were all like wait hold on 
tell us how you made this opening <laughs> like thing. They were like fascinated, the whole thing. He also had bees. We ended up going out to see the bee. It, it was crazy. He thought he was just going to show us, oh, you know, a planet. Me... And instead, we ended up doing all of this different stuff at his house. That's super cool. That makes me think. Remember when we went to the beekeeper? Yeah. Yeah. That We actually did a unit study around that field trip alone. Oh, that's oh, funny. I just yeah. took my Girl Scouts there this year, too. Oh, my gosh. And then back to the space exploration <laughs> unit study. At the end of ours, we just happened to be in Florida for a competition. And so I was like going to throw in a trip to Cape Canaveral. And our Airbnb that we were staying at on the beach, the lady told us at check-in, she's like, you know, there's a rocket launch at 5 a.m. Like completely randomly. Like I know. couldn't know. So we got up early, watched the rocket launch, and then went to NASA the next day. I couldn't have planned that if I wanted to. That's it just all kind of cool. organically happened. That is so cool. Yeah, we finished a unit study by heading to the Johnson Space Center. And I timed it as such that we finished when they had their homeschool week. Oh, fun. Which fun. is super cool. And they it's had a, supposed to be neat. And they do a theme every year. And that year happened to be Leonardo da Vinci and they brought a bunch of his inventions. Oh, very cool. And they were all in the foyer and they were all created by, I don't know, NASA. And my kid happened to be infatuated with Leonardo at the time. So it kind of yeah. was a twofer. Oh my gosh, I love that. Well, another theme that you could use for a unit study is cultural diversity. Integrate social studies by exploring different cultures, their traditions, geography through various countries and customs, language arts through reading multicultural literature. And you can do all kinds of different art by creating crafts or artworks that are inspired by different cultures. Yeah, I've talked about Universal Yums a million times because we do love it. And even though it's not a specific unit study, it kind of is. It's one that just kind of trickles throughout our entire school year. So every time the country box comes in, we do like a little mini unit on that country. Yeah, so. yeah. Our geography club was basically like a unit study every week. Yeah, it sure was. You can also do civil rights movement. You can connect history by studying key events and figures. You can incorporate social studies by discussing equality and social justice. Language arts can be covered through reading or listening to speeches or reading memoirs of influential leaders. And art can be taught by learning about powerful art created during that time or creating projects that represent the movement. We concluded our civil rights movement unit study by going to the Civil Rights Museum. And we also visited the Lorraine Motel where Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered. It was really powerful for my kids. Yeah, we have another friend who ended this unit study with a huge road trip, like through Memphis, Birmingham, yeah. Selma. It was awesome. And these are just starting points. Like we said, a unit study really can be about anything and each unit study can be adapted expanded combined with other subjects however you want to suit the interests and educational needs of your kids the flexibility of homeschooling allows for endless possibilities in designing unit studies it sure does we will include some of the links and ideas and everything that we're talking about on our show notes on our website, so be sure to check that out after you listen. I'm going to have some great free resources for this episode, so sign up for our newsletter so you don't miss out. So now that we've explored some really cool things that you could do with unit studies, and you're probably thinking all kinds of ideas with your own kids and some of the things that are interesting to them. How do you create your own unit study? Well, you are in luck because our free resource for the week is a template that's going to help you develop your own unit study. Sure is. But to get you started, we're going to kind of walk you through. Here's seven steps to help you develop a unit study on your own. Number one, choose a theme or topic. We just gave you a bunch, but you can select a broad theme or a specific topic that can encompass multiple subjects. Number two, you want to determine what you want your child to learn or achieve through this unit study. Define specific learning objectives for each subject area that you're going to cover. Number three, you're going to gather your resources, collect books, online resources, documentaries, experiments, worksheets, other materials related to your chosen theme. Go to your library. You can use educational websites. Museums can be excellent sources. For me, this often means going through my house to see what stuff I already have because I am a serial picker upper of things that I may be able to use later. So, so many times I've been able to craft a unit study with things that I already owned. <laughs> 
Number four, create lesson plans. You want to develop a schedule or outline for your unit study. You want to plan the activities, the readings, the experiments, and all the projects for each day or week. Be flexible and adapt it as needed. Yeah, don't just count on the fact that there's going to be a rocket launch at the end of your unit study. (laughs) (laughs) Plan that out. (laughs) Number five, integrate subjects. So find ways to connect all your different subjects within the theme. For example, if you are studying medieval times, you could end up building a guillotine. (laughs) Kids love that. Or a trebuchet that throws the things over the castle walls. We built a huge trebuchet. That's taller than me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can totally do that. You can go to medieval times with your kids. That's a lot of fun. Go Green Knight. (laughs) Buy them real swords like I did because that's what homeschoolers need. Yeah, they can write about, you know, write a story about King Arthur and his knights. They can learn about horse care. Yep. Pull in some math lessons with the uh, circumference series of books. Oh, those those. are good books. They're so cute. Moving on to number six, you want to include hands-on experiences and activities. And this is my favorite part. Put some thought into this. Are there science experiments or art projects or field trips or interviews with experts that are related to the theme that can make learning about your theme more engaging? I remember when we did a unit study for the entire school year of the history of American music. We had tons of activities during this unit I put together, and every four weeks I had a major project. We built a transistor radio, we made a mixtape, we wrote a song and performed it, and this was in addition to all the other fun hands-on activities. I made him build a guitar for the final school year-end project. Really, it's only your imagination that limits you on this. You have so many directions you can go on any topic. Absolutely. And then number seven, finally, adapt it to your child's pace. Be flexible, adapt to your child's learning style and their pace. If they show interest in a particular aspect, delve deeper into it. Foster a spirit of curiosity and exploration. Encourage your child to ask questions questions, seek answers, and explore beyond the boundaries of this project. Right. And periodically, you want to assess the effectiveness of your unit study. You want to consider what worked well and what could have been improved upon. Adjust the plan accordingly for future studies. And remember, the beauty of homeschooling is the flexibility it offers. So don't hesitate to modify the plan as needed based on your child's interests, strengths, and the areas that might need more attention. So what if I don't want to do it on my own? Where can I find homeschool unit studies? Oh my gosh, there are several resources available for secular homeschool unit studies. Here are five that kind of provide a variety of subjects and approaches. Uh, One is Build Your Library, and we've both used this one a lot. This is a literature-based curriculum. It offers secular unit studies that cover various subjects. It integrates history, science, language arts, and more around engaging literature. I mean, really, Really, the entire curriculum is kind of like a giant unit study, but they also sell various small units. They've got like some Harry Potter ones. They've got an evolution and Darwin unit study that we did. She also had a fabulous one about elections that we did around the last presidential election, and it taught all about government, and it was great. And then it had election night chart that you could check off states as they yeah, came we in. Did it that was one really too. cool. It was really cool. There's also Blossom and Root, and this curriculum is designed with a secular nature-based approach. It offers unit studies across different subjects, focusing on nature, literature, and art. I've never used them, but I've heard people that have really enjoyed those. Yeah, I've um, heard it recommended often for really young kids, and I turned a friend on to it, and she said that that was her favorite and that she kind of decided to homeschool based on that, which I was like, great, that's perfect. Teachers Pay Teachers is another website. This is like a site where different teachers sell products that they've made themselves to other teachers. And so some of these are free, some of these are very in cost, but basically you can find all kinds of eclectic, literature-rich unit studies for a range of ages and subjects that have an emphasis on making learning and Aging, and these are from experienced teachers. There's also Torchlight, and that offers unit studies based on engaging literature again, history, science for multiple grade levels. It incorporates a secular approach. And, you know, we are a secular inclusive podcast, so this is 
where we're going to go with our recommendations. <laughs> right. You can probably find all kinds of religious unit studies as well, but we, we're focusing on some secular ones. Curiosity Chronicles. We actually saw these guys for the first time at the conference that we did back in July. Oh, yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. Them. They're a history curriculum company, but so they offer unit studies that combine history as the spine with literature and geography, and it's just a really cool program. Yeah, and these sources often provide comprehensive unit study packages or guides that cover all kinds of subjects, and it allows for an integrated approach to learning while catering to secular preferences. Right. It's always a good idea to review samples or trial periods to ensure that resources align with your homeschooling goals and for your child's learning style, too. A unit study is often a good way to try out a particular curriculum, too. If you yeah. want to kind of sample something, try, yeah. try one of their unit studies first. For sure. So if you've never thought about unit studies, you may want to consider buying or building your own. This might be just the thing you're looking for to engage your child or if you're feeling a little burned out and looking for a refreshing change from that regular curriculum that we all get that burnout around November. I know you're we about do. to pick up your holiday. I know. Study. Remember I do. Well, I do a home ex semester, so I bag everything for that. <laughs> Well, that was really a fun one. I, that is. We could just go on and on about unit studies. We could. Unit yeah. studies are so much fun. Yeah. So we would love to hear from you. If you've created something that you've enjoyed, your children have enjoyed, come on to our Facebook page and comment on this episode thread because I'm always looking for new things and I know other people are too because this is one that has always taken us on all kinds of directions we never imagined. Right. And I'll include a link to, there's a Facebook group that I follow that's all about secular unit studies and morning baskets and people are always sharing really cool resources on there too yeah so tune in next week for episode 57 homeschooling in the kitchen learning how to cook is an important life skill that extends far beyond the kitchen we're going to learn all about that and more next week yeah while the kids prepare our meal for us <laughs> <laughs> see you next time bye-bye cheers be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast. <laughs>